how many potatoes does it take to win an armed forces bowl? Not one, not two, maybe the third time's a charm? That's right. The CUNA Kings just came off their best season with eight wins, yet somehow still found a way to come up empty-handed in their bowl game. Regardless, Old McDonald is turning the page to year five of our team builder dynasty, and I predict this season will be the line in the sand defining our program for many, many millennia to come. Little Pep in his step, it's the new big man on campus. Emmanuel Pepper can and will take this team the distance. Old McDonald sure believes in him. Let's not get too carried away yet as Mitch Birmingham is in his senior season. The man had 49 touchdown passes last season, locked and loaded. I don't even want to mention how many interceptions he's had. Let's just say through three seasons, he already holds the NCAA interception record, passing Timmy Chang from Hawaii 2000 to 2004. Yep it's that bad. Although it's really bad, I don't know if it's menu merchant level because Mitch is the only one to crack the first team all Mountain West Conference. A lot of our guys join him on the list in the second team selection, including Danny Berger, side of fries, one of our youngest guys and elite dev. I don't think he's going to be flipping patties anytime soon. The NFL will be calling. One of the best parts of a new season, in my opinion, is looking for the next crop of CUNA Kings. Who's going to rise to the top and become the next spud stud? Our prestige seriously must be going up as there are a lot of five stars now available to recruit. Doesn't look like any of them are interested, but just having the option is always a plus. Kerry Forrester, the number one player in all of the nation, best defensive tackle would be a huge upgrade. He's from Cedar Hill, Texas, and he passed the sniff test, got great attributes. Looks like CUNA Idaho has been building pipelines to Texas and Florida. That is a good sign. When you can look for guys that are talented and live in the biggest states, you know they will rise to the top. We learned a lot about it in Salona Beach. And if you don't recall, competition breeds excellence. Our board is set, scouted, and even replenished with new prospects because some were busts. I like what I see, and I too like what I see here in this season's schedule starting off against New Mexico. A couple Mountain West matchups before jumping into the Harvest Heritage Showdown, road game against Temple, more conference matchups, including the Gold Rush Classic, before finishing off the season with number five Pittsburgh and Old Miss. I can't wait to see the test those teams bring. Only thing that's missing is our Gem State grudge match. Being in the same conference, we can't schedule around the set matchups that the Mountain West has predestined for us. So the bad news is, unless we meet in the championship game, we might not see them this year. Old McDonald is just itching to show Boise State what our team has been up to these last couple seasons. A rare sight indeed to see on the recruiting front. It's a left-handed scrambling quarterback, four-star gem, Josh Vaughn. I know we just brought in Pepper and we love the quarterbacks with the farm name, but I can't say no to a lefty with these attributes. I'll go ahead and toss our name in the hat. Jace Clemens is another one of them dudes. That's crazy. James Palacio. Opening week of the season is upon us, so no better time to look at the 28 Heisman Trophy candidates. Cam Michael from CU. Outside of Belfort, the one quarterback. Isaac, the one running back. We have three receivers putting their name in the hat. Guaranteed that list will change week over week. Heck, maybe a guy like Isaiah Cobbs with four touchdown catches will become the Heisman winner. You never know. Imagine the feast we would have if a potato king won the Heisman. And on that note, squaring up against the New Mexico Lobos, let me know in the comment section down below who your favorite CUNA king has been in this rebuild so far. Lobo defense stiffened up and stopped us on our first drive, but you're not going to stop Sal, Jizz, the Miz, man down the sideline. You better call Sal if you're facing him and on defense, he's going to be a handful for any team. Only took three touches to get him on fire. Why don't we just feed him the rock again? Stiff arm and extra. While it is working out, I'm definitely not going to get away from this recipe. Third and five. Let's just take the out over here to Vilma who cuts it up the field. Touchdown. That is number one of the 2028 season. Just a matter of time till I see the stands begin to fill as our team is legit. The cheer leaders know it too. It was a massive tryout this season. Senior led at a lot of positions. We have the veteran bunch to get the job done. And cheese, what a cheesy interception. I don't think I gave that a fair reaction. That was crazy. I need to see a replay. Quarterback thinks it's incomplete. I don't know. Yeah, right. DeMarvin Cheese, a senior stepping up here on this defensive drive. I'll take one potato extra cheesy, if you know what I mean, and go ahead, load it up because... 
were not doing a good job stopping them from getting into the end zone. Cut to the left, cut to the right. They just made us look silly out there. But you know who else is going to make the opponent look silly? It's Heitman. Third and 14. That's what the drives come down to. Want to break a tackle. It's not looking good. We're going to punt that thing back. Not anything to really cause concern. I think the team is simply warming up. Mitch has got to get one out of his system. You all know that. Can't settle into a season until Birmingham adds to his interception lead across the NCAA. It's a warm-up game, guys. Come on now. We got to shake off some of the rust. They are definitely giving Old McDonald a nice little scare in the season opener until Kiervo says, give me some touchdown on my plate. One potato, one pigskin, let's eat. Now we can go back to what worked so well in the first quarter. With the lead, let's feed Sal and have him carry it play by play. Seriously begging this offensive line to hold a block. Come on, guys. And that is textbook blocking all the way and goodbye sal we salute you sir what do you know the ice begins to thaw a team has come from the ashes out of the ashes arises the perfect golden potato bake them up mash them up let's put it out of reach lobos out of timeouts a touchdown here ends this thing if it wasn't already over sal is running rampant and i like what i'm seeing in week one one and oh in the young season we got a good one on our hands senior quarterback mitch birmingham looking to take his team to new heights <laughs> recruiting front it's definitely too early to tell but good signs here as we're in the top three for four or five stars sorry make that five five stars around the league ryan pelham against fcs midwest put up five touchdowns on 13 catches love to see our conference represent in its time for another interconference game against Fresno State. I think I have PTSD from the last time we came here and choked a game when we had like a three touchdown cushion. Mitch knows very well he was still the quarterback at the time. So Mitch is strongly advised to stop playing around with his food and go finish the job. Let's go ahead and mash up their potatoes. It's fitting on the road that we go and take out anyone else's potato crop because our crop is far superior. After all, only one man, Old McDonald, has grown gold potatoes oh yeah we got a streaking receiver down at the left side of the field really mitch we're still doing this senior season and we're still overthrowing guys come on for that mistake i am banishing him to the gulag for just one play spice up our potatoes get some pepper on them suckers let's go across the middle of the field i don't mind leaving him in the gulag a little longer mitch can wait as we dot up our receiver for his first ever collegiate touchdown with some pep on that one to Heitman. Where were you when it happened? Coach McDonald said he would put back Mitch into this game, but I think he's fallen in love with the six foot five frame of Pepper. I mean, how could you not love what you see? The gunslinger knows how to hit a man in stride, accurate ball, all the way showboating Vilma Fresno State's newest villain we get better and better but bonehead decisions are still made on the daily 37 seconds left Bell put on a great move that's a touchdown over the middle is that four touchdowns already in the first half um guys once you go pepper you never go back 370 yards six touchdowns Mitch I'm sorry to do it to you but I think I have to bench you for the rest of the the season at this rate this is exactly what mitch did not want to happen but i just can't believe our little experiment led to six touchdowns from pepper and man mitch you're still really good you're that guy too mitch was not to be outdone he came back in this game determined to show that he still belongs on this team belongs as the quarterback it was never in question until i just got a good look at emmanuel pepper in his first collegiate game ever i got a really tough decision on my hands for next week what should old mcdonald do it's that time on the recruiting board where we can start hard pitching boston college really wants six foot seven vince hayes they got him on a visit on week four that's like next Next week or so i have the schedule visit bug but by the time i'm recording this i hear a major patch update is on the way so by the time you're seeing this video the patch could already be out that's a frustrating one because we could lose a prospect that we probably should have had for top prospects like john drake i'm also gonna try and hard sell i see two b interest here that third one could be pro potential hope the hard pitch works but we're gonna monitor this screen to make sure it goes through Devonte here i'm a little nervous about hard pitching because he has a d plus in proximity to home i'm just gonna leave it colby wolf here on the other hand it might be too soon and i don't know if i know enough about him i really hope he doesn't line up with one of the f grades because two of these pitches with coach prestige actually line up to that f proximity to home this is what i'm talking about it could be coincidence but the first week i switch up john drake man was not a fan so let's 
go back to sending the house. Back to the QB conundrum at hand here. Mitch Birmingham is better in every department, speed, acceleration, agility, throw power, and most accuracies, as well as handling pressure. So with that, Old McDonald recognizes how everyone is super excited about Pepper in the future here of the CUNA Kings. We're gonna go ahead and let Mitch get another start. Let's respect our senior that put in the blood, sweat, and tears to get here. Now, this decision is contingent on the fact that he wins us the Harvest Heritage Showdown. If he sells the bag and loses this game, all bets are off. Old McDonald's going straight to the Pepper Shack. Realistically, it's gonna be the hot hand moving forward. And of course, who's ever gonna put us in a position to win more games? Cause that is what it's all about at the end of the day. Look at that money Mitch play. I'm just gonna come out and say that was a buttery smooth move right there by Mitch. Keep the good times rolling here. Harvest Heritage Showdown. We got to get their number. Little jet touch to Heitman. He's got the corner. He's got some space for at least 15. Mitch Birmingham is the CUNY King all-time record holder in practically every passing category. I don't think there's one he doesn't have. Anyone remember Farmer Brown from year one? Yeah, buddy's out on a nice potato farm right now while our team is going to work ready to win ourselves a championship. Mitch Birmingham is a wonderful mentor, I can say. As long as Pepper takes him with the grain of salt, then should be able to minimize the interceptions that Mitch is known for. Sometimes players have an it factor that can't be captured on an attribute seat. I know for sure there ain't a category for dog in them. Second and goal, we've gotten all the way down here after all, let's finish it off. Austin with the stop, it's third and goal. Let's see what we're made of across the middle. Yes, Heitman. Two touchdown passes from Mitch today. That is not the same six I was used to seeing from Pepper last week. In fact, I get it's a rivalry game, but what are we doing down by two scores? We had a deal, Mitch, and now the team is down by 10. I don't think there's been enough leadership on the offensive side of the ball. The fans were clamoring, so Old McDonald is going to go ahead and give the people what they want. Here he is, Pepper in the flesh, going to come out and get a quick strike. Coming in fresh off the bench in the fourth quarter. That's a tough ask for anyone, no matter how seasoned you are. Back at it again, going to go ahead and find the open receiver. I'm telling you right now, if Pepper can lead this comeback, do the unthinkable, he's going to go ahead and have the job going forward it seems to be heading in that direction right now second and ten dyke's gonna get seven this is seriously risky business right here fourth and three choosing to go for it rather than settle for three points i don't know what we're thinking still not over yet we can go ahead and strike right back into this thing what a catch what a broken tackle we're in business straight up brain fart blowing a timeout and now it's third and 13 and we only got one of them things left that is terrible at least this corner shot is gonna go in for do you believe in miracles? We need something right now. UMass sure handily recovers. Can't blame Pepper one bit. He came in and delivered. Seriously though, we're going to lose our first game of the season in the Harvest Heritage Showdown against UMass. Why do they have this team's number? Get my team's name out your mouth. Tired of them mashing up our potatoes and sprinkling bacon bits all over it. Just lost a five star in the race. I'm going to go ahead and not take any more chances. Kerry Forrester, come see us against UMass. Utah State. We're a championship contender. I know you like that, so go ahead and attend a team meeting. No more Mr. Nice Guy for Old McDonald. It's Pepper starting against Temple, his first ever collegiate start. And I understand it goes way deeper than just the quarterback position. But in today's college football landscape, you can't risk having a star quarterback on the bench or else he might hit the portal. Look forward to seeing what Pepper can do as an encore now in his first collegiate start. Let's go ahead and drop the big one on the first drive. A textbook dink dunk home run slam dunk alley oop that ball went where it needed to go right to vilma come on man that's what i'm talking about this is exactly why the six foot five scrambling field general is the right man for the job clearly does not need any fertilizer this potato has sprouted dr pepper out here has a way with the fellas i can't lie kane six rallying around the true freshman it's encouraging to see this performance and around power that was terrible until it wasn't. Not sure why the defense high key gave up on that play. Because over here, we never back down, never what? Never give up. 
touchdown pepper to cane i'm cheeked up right now don't mind us coming on in up 28 to nothing looking to make it 35 zip oh yeah is it cool i forgot to mention it's only the second quarter so we have a whole nother half of football keeping calm under pressure there hitting heitman for another touchdown this is getting hysterical this team Cuna Kings look like world beaters playing like this. I get it's the Temple Owls, but come on, man. You can't just be any quarterback and sauce anyone up just out of high school like the way he is. I really did try to give our guy Mitch another chance, but when Pepper is playing like this, I don't think he'll ever see the field again. Oh no, on that last sack, he got hurt. I literally jinxed it. I said Mitch is never gonna see the field again. I was wrong, and guess who's back? Because of an unfortunate injury, I really hope that was not a costly one for the long haul. Just a bruised knee, he will return. So that's good news. Up 35 zip. I don't feel too bad about letting Mitch back in this game as he steps into that one and delivers a nice touchdown to Bell. Got all figured out in the blue tent. Number seven is back in, clocking into this one. Strip sack fumble. Just brush it off the other shoulder. It's a 49-0 victory. Shut down, complete domination. That's how we play football, folks. His performance earns Mountain West Player of the Week honors. Going up against Utah State, we have a huge visit in Kerry Forrester. Definitely want to also get Garrett Murphy scheduled up. So let's bring him in against Nevada. And heck, this five-star aligns with a lot of our interests. So we can go ahead and hard pitch him student of the game. Kerry, number one player in the nation number one at his position. Garrett, number two in the nation, number two at his position. If we can get both number one and number two atop the high school's best players, that says a lot about the CUNY Kings as John Drake has made his decision to go to Florida. I think, unfortunately, we lost Colby Wolf, but once again, see above with Carey and Garrett. This one's scary with Jace Clemens. We have the lead, but Oregon is zooming right back into it. Ain't no way I'm letting Puddles do that to us. Let's go ahead and schedule a visit and try to end this thing as early as possible. Well, in the spirit, of trying to lock guys up, James would be a wonderful addition. We have some dudes in the QB room, as you can tell, but it never hurts to add another young gun. Why not Josh Vaughn? I mean, Buddy cares about the academics and he's a gem lefty quarterback. This has got to be one of the craziest stat lines I've ever seen. Ramon King, nine catches, 342 yards and three touchdowns for the Ducks. That's going to prompt me right now to ask you all, let me know in the comment section, what is the craziest performance you've ever witnessed, whether you've done it yourself or you saw another team like this do something wacky if this was the nfl he would have cracked the single game receiving yard record but with 63 yards short of the ncaa record set by troy edwards right there troy edwards 405 a lot of these records are definitely tough to beat before the dynasty is done i guarantee you cuna kings will be on that list old mcdonald turns his attention to utah state as there are two five-star prospects on the sideline watching the game today and spectating they want to see where they can fit in on the roster and trust me they definitely can fit right in on this team I absolutely believe it. Recruiting one of the best players in the nation is always a special thing, but recruiting two of them in the same class, that's next level. And Utah State got to the second gear scoring that next level touchdown. I refuse to think Emmanuel Peppers is just gonna sit there and let this happen. As if right on cue, Pepper heard his name, heard he was needed, sprung into action, and is going to throw an interception rather than get us points. Uh-oh, that looked like a rookie mistake. Accidents happen, so I'm going to bear with him just a bit longer out here. No need to pull the plug or nothing. Let's get some confidence back in our young guy. That read option, blown up. Nothing like eating a sack and building your confidence. Am I right, guys? That is what we don't want to happen at all. Fourth and one, Utah State is sending everyone and the house. That is crazy look. Dumping it to Kane. He catches it, and he's running. About midfield here. Let's go ahead and take a shot deep to the running back right into his lap that was textbook accuracy Kiero stepping up out of here Alex Kiero is another freshman running back kind of under the radar because he's our third string guy Kavka who we brought in the other five star is not a receiving back so Kiero is the one taking these snaps tied up going into the third quarter let's dump it out to Sal he hasn't done a lot this game but it's time to change that fourth and eight what's it gonna be a blow by here by number 14 that's Heitman holding it in first and goal in these situations you definitely better call Sal let's go up the gut and now that we got them thinking about him, let's go ahead and jet touch it to Vilma. Inching, inching, inching ever so close. Inches, and I mean inches away. We literally just need the textbook carry in by Emmanuel Pepper. No need to overcomplicate it. A closer game than the first two games he... 
he stepped into that is another costly interception that's gonna go to the house he is flawed and human after all facing some adversity how will pepper respond well for starters we can go ahead and take the open man and heitman and on this one let's go ahead with the flood defense was large on this next one here giving us opportunistic real estate practically first in goal another touch pass he's got the edge vill putting the villain into it up by a score here with just a couple minutes left they're gonna go for a big play and keep the aggies out of the end zone and now we actually have a ball game on our hands a blow by here from bell he is so good with the deep ball I'm impressed with Pepper's arm. The fighting Aggies want to take it to overtime. I know they do, but I thought we could have lurked that one. First and goal, it's definitely going down for real. What a textbook dive deflection. That was Berger playing like a superhero out here, and he also can step in and make a tackle. Holding on the offensive line, let's push that back. Second and goal at the 15 or third and goal at the six. I'll take my chances and go for an extra down. It's second and 15, looking for pay dirt, going for it all. I guess we chose wrong. Well, with only five seconds left, let's go ahead and test the cannon and just chuck one up for dear life. It's gonna be triple covered and it wouldn't surprise me if it was an interception. Just need a dink and dunk. No need to go for it all right here on this play. Even though I did like what I see slipping through, it's Kane first in goal at the one. I like how Pepper fit that one in and then he's gonna hand it off to Sal who gets the touchdown. First in goal, we need some help out here. Utah State looking for an open receiver. He's got one back there and said he stepped up. Definitely ate it on that last one. And he's gonna eat cheese as Demarion or Demarvin Cheese 27 is gonna take it back. That's a game ceiling clinching interception for 27. I love a cheesy play here and there. We've seen a couple of them now in the young season. That's my senior cornerback. Absolutely thrilling game here against the Aggies. 42-35. Everyone can go home happy. And old McDonald is going to go play in the potato fields after this one. Jimmy Waitman can no longer wait up. He had to become a CUNY King after that thrilling victory. But let's welcome him to the squad. I sure as heck can't wait to see Kerry or Garrett make a decision if they're coming or not. I suppose Jace Clemens made up his mind. The show must go on. Bring on the Nevada Wolfpack. Four and one. I'm definitely happy with how the season is progressing this far we're gonna also start here on defense in this one trying to hold the wolf pack down limiting them to only three points is a big win for the group that fumble is not a big win unless we figure it out on offense this one could become very defensive very quick no more mr nice guy for pepper let's step into something spreading out all the guys someone's gonna get open and yep 14 or 15 it was gonna be one of them first big pass play all game and it's already the second quarter lobbing that one while getting hit interception perks of having a senior experienced quarterback well we might need to call on his name if we get colder everyone knows it's pepper's team going into the future but right now we want to win as many games as we can manual says slow down there coach mcdonald i am still very much capable of going out here and getting our team the plays we need feeding our tight ends most of this drive maybe we'll go ahead and finish it off to the big tight end dykes instead he'd rather booty bump the football let's try out a fake field goal i haven't done it all series long and this one kind of worked out yeah no that that accuracy and that throw power not it absolutely brutal hate to see that against this team love to see a gates interception at number 44 made up for that blunder on offense his red hot sizzling start left us with some unrealistic expectations and because of what i'm seeing here i might need to give him a game of rest after this don't need to solidify on a qb qb1 i'm happy with giving mitch more reps in his senior season so mark your calendars we're gonna get another mitch birmingham start as it has been shaky for Pepper this one through. Coach McDonald believes this is a great teaching moment and needs to let Pepper finish what he started. So although he's made up his mind on next game starter, let's see if he can still lead a comeback in this one. Being blitzed out of his jock strap right now. I hate to see the damage being done. Again, I'm just gonna come on record. This is not the same guy I remember who can chuck deep bombs just like that. That right there is the version of the guy I know 
fumbling and recovering his own thing. Are you kidding me, Bell? Way to give McDonald a heart attack on the sideline. Wolf pack in the driver's seat looking for a score. It might just be best to let him score, to be honest. Because if they really wanted to, they can chew a whole lot more clock than they're doing. If they had IQ, they could have took the clock all the way down to zero and took a field goal. They said, forget all that. Let's take six and hit the Heisman post. Who even are you, bro? That is a double-edged sword scoring so soon. And man is going to lay it out on the line. Scrambling to his right. Stepping into it. Kane down the sideline. Big play. I can confidently say he will atone for all the mistakes if he makes big, big plays here. Definitely willing to look past it if we can cash in for six. That is a risky one to do it. Yep, another mistake. Hit the bench next week, buddy. Sharpen up, refine your skills, get some rest because this was not a good game today. Losing on the home turf is painful. Despite the loss, nothing can rain on this parade as Kerry Forrester is headed to CUNA, Idaho. Got that hotline bling because we also were able to ring up Garrett Murphy and entice him to come as well. Forget it. Let's party. James Palico is on his way too. Monster week in the recruiting department. They not like us. They not like us. As you can imagine, landing these guys freed up a lot of points and now we can go ahead and turn our attention to some new guys maybe we haven't considered yet. Timothy Grubb is one of those guys and he's always ready to grub out on some potatoes. It's the Gold Rush Classic against the Wyoming Cowboys. Like so, it's only fitting we strap in to the alternate golds. Mitch is back. That is right. Sound the bells. He's taken the last few weeks to really reflect on his performance, reflect on who he is as a farmer and a potato king. Team always came first for Birmingham. So as much as he disliked the choice by Coach McDonald, he stuck with it. And to prove to old McDonald he was the right choice all along, let's go ahead and score six and get the lead. Boom. The ceiling is off the charts. Unbelievably high for Pepper, but we need just calm, cool composure from the veteran. That's exactly what this team needs in the Gold Rush Classic. Climbing our way out of a pit, across the middle, it's hype man. We're up two scores. Want to see me do it again? Over the middle, slant to Bell. Hardly any safeties back there. That's going to spell trouble. A breakaway play. The speed unparalleled from Bell. Offense going crazy like we just hit gold. Reggie Jarrett wants to neutralize the gold rush that we're on and he's literally going to do it again third and 19 not much hope in sustaining this drive but maybe the jet touch pass can and will do it bell is out of there oh my goodness once he gets into the open field you and not catching that man this one was headed to a blowout and quickly great defense after all all the way to the very end six points given up in the first in the first quarter, couldn't stop the 38 Kuna gave in return. Lost out lefty Josh Vaughn to Kansas State here in the end. I'm not gonna sit here and cry about it when we just landed Antoine Lockett. 95 speed, 93 throw power. This reminds me of the Savannah Banana quarterback, D. Peely. If you all haven't checked out that full rebuild, you're gonna have to go see what D. Peely was about. Hawaii is just the next one up to catch these hands. And it is surprising to me that they've rebuilt themselves into a six and two caliber team in just year five. Where is he going walking out of bounds like that are you kidding me that's unacceptable play right there just walking out of bounds on a free touchdown thankfully bell was not about to give up another silly blunder bringing in a blitz here on defense he's gonna go over the middle and miss his dude but birmingham the boys get a chance to get some cushion and just take off a monster fumble on the way down. A painful reminder that even in college, you are not a tank. Gotta be cautious about the hits we take and slide whenever possible as their quarterback just walks it in untouched. Number 11 thinks he's got something going. I'll go ahead and give him a little bit of credit. He did get his team back in a position to take the lead. How many times do I gotta teach you this lesson with open receivers? Opportunities to come back in this one are dwindling down wide open, 38 just had a free lane with the free lane he cashed in so that's that and that's another classic mitch interception padding the all-time career interception list dude clearly the decision to go back to mitch has not panned out exactly like we thought it would can't report it's been okay this game in particular has been messy though and it's even messier just trying to get rid of it another interception this time all the way for a pick six. The sign of defeat, everyone's bummed out, 50 to 21. Hawaii had a mission in mind when they traveled from the island overseas to this one. Yeah, and that's gonna be it for Mitch. I think I've seen enough from the senior. I'm gonna let 
Pepper, for better or worse, turn the page for the future. Five and three still bringing in a steady stream of recruits like JJ D'Imperio, Connor Keglar, four star running back, and many more right around the corner. Remember, the season is not going to go down quietly. We have four more games, two of them by top 10 opponents. If we can take one of two against ranked opponents, I'd be a happy camper. So let's shoot for an eight and four finish at least. All set up, ready to go. 88 overall against 85 overall pit. Ratings don't mean a whole lot, honestly. That's why Pitt is seventh ranked in the nation. And well, that's why we're not. Pepper is grateful to be back on the field. And you know what? We need a jolt of electricity against number seven Pitt. It's not going to happen on this drive as they dunk on us no fans again in the stands farmers are such a hard working bunch that it's hard to convince many of them to come out to game day on their precious saturday i swear it feels like we need to be a winless team to command an audience like that and instead we're down 21-0 last catch put us at the one let's hand it off to sal let him plug up the middle touchdown only down by two scores now come on we can come back right guys never say never if someone can break free it'll literally become a 99 plus yard touchdown it's just not very feasible i can see why this team is top 10 in the nation they're playing very strong not waving the flag or nothing yet but this team is gonna be a threat for anyone who goes up against them. As exciting as it was to see Kiro score that long touchdown, look at the impact on this game, 38-14. Just struggling to muster something together. Pitt seems to be off the radar for teams we can upset in this one. One word, disgusting, 55 to 14. I am absolutely repelled. I do not like what I saw. Maybe we can address the glaring holes with a few more additions on the prospect list. Jose Jose, a four-star center just opened up on the board. Let's go pursue him. We got this far with Amani Bush before he just locked us out with the championship contender deal breaker. Six foot six, 244 pound tight end. Brutal stuff, but if we get a win or two, we can easily bump our grade back to B minus. Last week, is out of sight out of mind it's time we hit the road go to colorado and show the rams we can travel and compete 100 that last game against pitt was a fluke and i can show you they might be destined to make a run in the playoffs for our squad i want to go back to form when we had them in the first few weeks of the season looking pretty good on my side of things here great catch way to concentrate making all the right decisions early in this one slant another good choice Vilma first and goal. Through the highs and lows, this field general is still out to prove something in a major way. He wants to leave no question marks, no stone unturned for year two. He wants to be the undoubted, uncontested QB starter. Textbook teamwork through a quarter and a half at this point. Under a minute, Pepper is cold after coming out blazing hot. Let's go ahead and turn it up again. Fourth and goal at the one. They're just going to hand it off. Number 30, Got it, ties this thing up. Actually, we're still spared by three whole whopping points. So we can just dump it again to the running back. Kiero, touchdown. That play is elite. If the linebacker's not prepped, he's gonna get toasted. Fourth and one, another crucial conversion. We're covering the zones and he just had to throw it away. Third and eight, a couple key drives here looming. We need to take the Rams out of their misery and finish the job now. Need to see a little more pep in his step to close this one out. Dropping back, we got a couple options here right over the middle. Spinning is Bell taking the block from the other receiver, springing it upfield. Can go ahead and call game as soon as we want like right here and right now. Pepper, third and 10, scrambling to his left. He's gonna use the receivers as blocking cushion. He fought it into the red zone and turned it over. My man was literally crossed the end zone and just couldn't hold on. Looking to use that and hit big right here on offense. It's a third and six fourth down bright side is we're not losing the downside is well we gave up the lead and now they're right back in this thing especially when pepper's got a whole open side of the field here let's just slide down he may not be a scrambler but you still need to put a spy on him from time to time i want to bake some potatoes man i've been waiting for a while to do that and another absolute dog water pass deflection interception pepper is ice cold and we're losing 30 to 23 i swear there was a whole different version of this quarterback at the beginning of the season no timeouts left i seriously just need to take a shot and we keep getting beaten up how quickly this game has turned sour third and 15 just want to take a bomb shot to anyone vilma will you be the guy oh man he seriously snagged that in and we have five seconds to hurry to the line and take a snap 
shooting towards the end zone. Three, two, one. He hikes it off in time. What's it going to be? The tight end over the middle. He threw it to Spruce. Oh my goodness. The Spruce tree hauls it in and I think we're at least going to tie it up. No, let's go for two. Insane. As the clock expired, he got right back to the line and snapped it. Can't count us out just yet. In fact, let's look at Freddie Spruce, sophomore tight end again. I think he is the second or third string in the depth chart. Doesn't matter right here becoming the hero. Coach McDonald's on the exact same page. He's already offering up his recommendations. We're going to go for the win. Pepper. Pepper looking to pepper one in there. And yo, that might be it. Did he just drop that? No review at all. Did he just drop that open ball in the back of the end zone for the loss? Are you serious right now? Did the Rams just squeak that one out? Come on, man. No review, nothing. It has been confirmed. What was a glimpse of hope here at the end? turns into heartbreak. In the matter of just a couple of weeks, we've fallen to five and five and our championship contender grade has dropped straight to a D, putting us at 112th in the nation. Even though Cobb had the electric game, clearly a can of corn for him on the defense. It seriously didn't amount to anything important. Now even worse, back to a 500 team, we have to take on the Old Miss Rebels. I wanted to go eight and four, you can kiss that out the window because Old Miss and the Rebels, number two in the nation, this is a scary good team. And we're already five and five, so the best we could do if we win this one in the next is go seven and five bare minimum six wins is a must bowl eligibility i can't understate how important that is to keep the cuna idaho dream alive the beauty of college football is this you get to wipe the slate clean every single week and go back out there last week no longer matters it's all in front of us this is the only thing we care about. Pepper has a lot of room for improvement. We get that. And taking a sack right there demoralized him just a bit. Another one. This is vicious. A couple positive matchups on the outside. So I'll be looking for Vilma or Bell. And it's going to be Vilma. I see him get right on through and hits him. What a connection. Great way to quiet the crowd there. Even though it's going to be tough to do that all game long against number 20 in the nation. In crowd ranking, that is number two in the nation for quality of team and the rank that the AP poll gave him. Way to hang on for first and goal. I see you, Pepper, coming out with some energy, looking to get your team on the board first with a touchdown six. You can count that thing. And the road show is off to a great start. Pepper's already mentally prepared to go back and forth. Blow for friggin' blow. This time, does his running back have the step? No, that's good coverage by the linebacker. Fourth and three, this place is rocking. No shot, we take the field goal. We're gonna go for the first down. Dialing up the RPO, just gonna let Sal take this one right up the middle. Back in motion, let's just dump it to him. Sal's got it, and he's got plenty of space to work. Touchdown, Cuna Kings. Hold on now, don't let us cook. Potatoes are in the oven, and it's time to bake. This is what I'm worried most about, the defense holding up against a top-tier offense. Sure as heck couldn't do it against the Pitt Panthers. I don't know if it's gonna be any easier here. Dropping 21 on her head like it's nothing. Yeah, I have a hard feeling we're going to be in for some trouble today. 28-14, we are one score away before this thing gets out of pocket. Sending the team on verticals over the middle, it's Heitman. Old McDonald had a farm, and on that farm, he was unprepared for the Rebels. Games like this and the last couple really humble us because I was starting to feel like the rebuild was shaping up. Don't get me wrong, we're still very much getting our team to a rebuild state but we're not power five level yet. It's actually becoming obvious to me that we have quite a few more years till we get there. Maybe by the time Pepper is a senior and we build a strong cast around him, then we can talk. For now, there is a lot to learn from. Pepper made some big mistakes, but at the end of the day, like we anticipated, Ole Miss, way too much. Towards the end of this thing, it became reminiscent of the Pittsburgh Panthers. 48 to 17. Feel like it would actually make for a good game if Pitt and Ole Miss matched up. On the bright side, at least we're bringing in Femi Naguin to help us out with the linebacking core. A couple other guys locked us out and another went to Penn State. Some of them are just not happy with how the season panned out. And I don't blame them, man. It looked a lot more promising in the beginning. Well, it doesn't get much worse than the stretch we're currently on. Whenever I'm down and feeling blue, I start to remember the Air Force Falcons are 0 and 11. So if we think we're having a bad year, which we are, why don't you go ask an Air Force fan. These guys feel nothing but pain right now. Hardly any fans outside of the cadets and those that live next door. No one made the trek out here. This right here is for bolt eligibility, so I really don't care what pain we've gone through. It's time to put it all aside and have an absolute day against the Falcons because this team 
is in the dumpster fire. We should look and feel again like a world beater after facing these dudes. Seven to zero, defense needs to make a third down stop here and we're really just gonna let the running back burst on out of there. Gave that man his Christian McCaffrey moment, but no more as they stack four dudes on the right side here. Let's just hold it down. Fourth and six, we'll take it. Pepper, I'm looking at you, man. Over the middle, you got Kane. You don't. We seriously had one job and one job only in this game. And are you serious? This guy, it feels like it's falling. 19-7, we're losing. That all needs to change right now. So let's just go for the strike to Vilma and get ourselves in a game. To me, it's ridiculous that our bull eligibility and everything that we've worked for is on the line. Even more ridiculous that we're letting the Falcons do this to us. Looks like everyone took a second half vacation and did not want to come back. Who can I count on on the team? Who wants to be here next season? It looks like Heatman is one of the few, the proud, the potato kings. Less than three minutes to go. We're fighting for our lives out here. Kavka finally gets some action, plows right through. Nice to see 26 get some touches. We'll need to be intentional about feeding him much more next season. We'll worry about that when next season rolls around. For now, we have to go win a game. We'll worry about that when next season rolls around. For now, we have a huge game on our hands. We just need to secure this play get the first down. No, nope. it's come down to this far too often, but at least we have a speedster who burns two DBs in any trips. It was a costly trip up since it cost us a fourth down. He'll make up for it here though. That's Bell, the same guy who tripped right in front of the end zone. We're gonna score. Let's go. A lot of showboating for a team that is down in this one. Going to get the ball back here, hit up Heatman, and try to get into field goal range. 30 seconds and no timeouts. That is a tricky, tricky situation to manage. Clock seriously ticking fast. Already down to 20 seconds left. Let's get out of bounds. Coach recommended we just get out of bounds right now. I don't think so. I want to get a few more and then get out of bounds. Now I'll happily take a 33 yard chip shot. Should be much more up our alley. And here we go. The meter is looking good. We fit it in and get the three point lead. With less than 10 seconds left, I can actually breathe a small sigh of relief. Could not afford to drop it to the 0 and 11 Falcons. Fans, don't act like you're all disappointed. You guys know nothing but pain this season. Nine seconds left. We just don't want to let anything crazy happen because that is the final dump off they're going to get. Time is expiring right here sack for the win there we go way to end it hartley and we are walking away back to idaho with a win you just saved old mcdonald's job essentially like if we lost to 0 11 air force no one would be safe the hot seat would be on fire in the mountain west unlv and boise state had great seasons hawaii had nothing to scoff at surprisingly enough we finished up here in the top half five and three record it looks like we only won one other non-conference game on the recruiting front amani bush is this close to committing and we have that deal breaker still inching closer and closer because of the scholarship I think he's ours next week unless they hard lock us out no matter what even at the end of the bar and give it to Auburn okay no he didn't hard lock us out was willing to look past the deal breaker and commit just like Jose Jose beautiful Dante Abbott junior quarterback at a USC walked away with a Heisman 4300 yards 45 touchdowns and despite the disappointing six and six season we still get the LA Bowl hosted by Gronk taking on the Wisconsin Badgers this one should seriously be a lot of fun and our toughest test yet a 91 overall going to need to go super saiyan in this one third time is a charm our first two bowl games were the lockheed armed forces bowl we dropped those maybe a change of scenery here at the la bowl is exactly what we need because wisconsin is going to be no easy task in fact on paper these guys are the toughest team we played all year that includes pitt and old miss time to step up and take on the Badgers. Nice climate controlled dome here. It's the home of the Rams and the Chargers. And this place is buzzing. It's culture shock, not gonna lie. CUNA Idaho has as many fans as like one of those sections over there in the end zone not even anywhere close to an entire stadium full of supporters for Wisconsin and us. Look at this, Greenwood Jr. strip sack recovery. Elijah was determined to rip that thing from the running back. And now here we are looking to respond back and score three points 
of our own. And we won't have to worry about field goals one bit if we can go ahead and cash in for six. Spoiler alert, we got no points whatsoever. And you know what's even worse? We're down 10-0 being shut out. If we don't do something about it right here, right now, this thing could be over. Hiero wants to win, and I gotta ask the rest of the team the same question. Sal, do you want to win? Show me grit, show me desire to get in there. Now we're on the board, and now we're talking. Get another score, and quickly, because it is 17 to 7, which means, yep, you guessed it. They went down the field, scored again. This play action pass looks promising. He gets it off to Dykes. There's seven. I'm sorry, Potato King fans. It only took us three quarters to turn up in here before choking it right back in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin also turning it up in here mashing our potatoes to bits. Pepper is forced to respond again on fourth and 10. Badgers are just not going away quietly. Even with a bomb to Bell and a touchdown, we're still down by three. This is the opportune time to come away with our first onside kick recovery. And since we couldn't get the ball back, it's official. We lose again. That's right, again, third strike you're out. An 0 in 3 start to a playoff career over the course of the last 3 seasons is something that needs to be studied in Old McDonald needs to be grilled. 6 and 7 on that saddening note and after taking a couple steps forward, it's time we took a step back. Some good players want to leave like Ben McKay, very low chance of persuading him. True freshman, 75 overall right guard. We cannot let a guy like this walk. Trevor over here looks okay, 74 overall, has a high chance of staying yet he is also throwing up the deuces. No one in the NFL draft yet again. And gosh, only two guys in the transfer portal interested in our school, huh? Off season was going so bad that it decided to crash. So this should be rather quick and uneventful. Handful of other high school guys, I'm just gonna finish up as well. I think we're pretty content with our class, all things considered. Our step back capped off with half a star lost in the prestige department. Painful reality for when it comes back to recruiting next season. Week two of the transfer portal, it's already done, one high school and two transfer targets done and done national signing day 30 commits two five star six four star 23 star and two twos training results in 86 overall across the board we have a 96 overall sophomore right guard danny Berger up to a 93 Lindsay to a 90 sal to a 90 a lot of high 80s as well the interesting thing i just noted here though is siante bullock had a better offseason than pepper this is definitely going to stir the pot come the spring game and an interesting decision decision awaits McDonald of next year, week one. Well, and just like that, folks, another year of CUNA Potato King football in the books. If you're soaking it up with King Sponge, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what is good. Really hope you're enjoying the content and stick around for the videos popping up on your screen right now. Bangers, bangers, bangers. College Football 25 is a movie with King Sponge. See you there.